in previous video we have continued the chapter of chloroalkali industries and we have understand the production method for the production of NaOH and chlorine gas by the method of electrolysis of brine solution if you have missed that video you can find it in the i button over here now having said that let's just continue our discussion on the chapter of chloroalkali industries if you can recall we have used in the previous lecture the membrane cell so now in this particular video we will explore what are the different types of the cell that can be used in order to manufacture NaOH and chlorine gas well there are three different types of the cells that are being used in the industries the first one is the diaphragm cell then we will understand the mercury cell and lastly we will understand the membrane cell so now let's continue first with the diaphragm cell as you can see on the screen this is the schematic diagram of the diaphragm cell as you can see here this is the main section in which at the center we are providing one diaphragm like this which is being responsible for the separation of the two different solutions or we can say which create two different compartments this compartment is being known as the anode compartment and while this compartment is being known as the cathode compartment and this diaphragm is being special kind of the diaphragm which only allow ions to pass through it and the chemicals such as hcl or we can say naoh does not pass through this diaphragm as you can see here in the image that the chlorine ions such as this can pass through this so uh, when we supply this saturated brine as you can see here that we are supplying saturated brine that is the mixture of nacl with the water so this water will decompose on the application of the electron on the application of the external electricity and ions will be generated and na plus ion can easily pass through this diaphragm to the another side and on this particular side that is your anodic side chlorine gas will be generated as we have seen in the previous week so as you can see here this chlorine ion that is your cl minus ion is now generated and it can be liberated out from this outlet as you can see here and we will get the cold chlorine gas now on the another side we are going to manufacture two products one is the hydrogen and another one is your aqueous solution of the NaOH as per the chemical reaction that we have understood in the previous video so after supplying the external power or electricity we can decompose this NaOH into the Na plus and this this NaCl into the Na plus and OH negative ion from the water so when both the ions combine they will generate NaOH this aqueous solution of NaOH can be taken out from this line and hydrogen gas can be taken out from the upper side of the cell as you can see here we are taking out hydrogen gas and from the bottom we can take out the NaOH solution this NaOH solution is very much diluted in nature right so this was the process description for the diaphragm cell generally this diaphragm can be made of the fiber material so that it can only allow different ions and this cathode and anode are being made up of the different material this anode is being generally made up of the graphite while this cathode is usually made up of the cast iron material right so this was all about the diaphragm cell now let's understand its process description as you can see here generally asbestos fiber are being used as the diaphragm in this cell which separate anode and cathode as we have seen in the previous image this diaphragm allow only ions to pass through it but it restrict diffusion of the products so NaOH or the NaCl cannot pass through this diaphragm it only allow ions to pass from one point to the another point. then this anode are being generally made up of the graphite 
and cathode are being made up of the cast iron as we have already discussed in the image. This diaphragm provides less resistance and hence it is being placed by the electrons in the close and compact cells. So we can utilize more number of the cell in order to get higher concentrated solution of the anions. As this cell is very much compact in the nature. The diaphragm become coagulated with its use. Hence it must be replaced with certain time intervals. So we have to replace our diaphragm as it become coagulated or we can say it become chopped with the ions. So the pores of the diaphragm will be blocked with the ions. So we have to continuously replace this diaphragm at different time intervals. Now after discussing this diaphragm cell, let's just understand what are the advantages and disadvantages associated with this particular process. Let's first focus the advantages. As you can see here, it can be operated with the less purified or diluted branch. So with this particular cell, we do not require highly concentrated brine solution. We can even use 20% concentrated brine solution to get NaOH with the diaphragm cells. It requires lesser voltage than the mercury cell. So electricity that we need to supply to carry out the electrolysis process is again very much less in this diaphragm cell compared to the mercury cell. These are the different points we can use when we want to compare different cells. That comparison we will see at the end of the video, at the end of this topic. So that after understanding all the cells, we will compare them, right? So that we can get the better idea that which particular cell is can be used for the different type of the application. Now, having understood that, let's just focus on the disadvantages of this particular cell. As you can see here, the sodium hydroxide and chlorine produced are both contaminated and require further purification. So the product coming out of this, uh, this cell are very much contaminated and they are not in their purest form. So further purification is always required with the diaphragm cell. Approximately 2600 kg of the water must be evaporated in order to get 50% concentrated caustic solution which ultimately increases the cost. Then the one more disadvantage of this cell is that the chlorine gas contains oxygen, which is highly objectionable in some industries. So we have to remove this oxygen from the chlorine gas. Then the last disadvantage is that asbestos emission is again very much problem. We cannot emit our asbestos directly to the ground. There are certain there are certain operations that need to be followed before the emission of the asbestos in the atmosphere. So this was the all advantages and disadvantages associated with the diaphragm cell. Now let us quickly understand the mercury cell in detail. As you can see here, the method of electrolysis using mercury cells is being invented by the Kastner and Kalensner in the year of 1892. In the mercury cell, the anode are same of the diaphragm cell. So the material of construction of anode is being same that we have used in the diaphragm cell, right? This anode can be generated with the use of the graphite. But here the cathode is being made up of the floating mercury. So now this cathode compound is being replaced by the mercury. We are using floating mercury as the cathode. You can see here that the Electrolysis produces mercury sodium, which is known as the amalgam, that is your NaHg. So the product that is NaHg, that is your uh, amalgam, is being generated in this particular manner. Relatively more, more pure caustic can be produced by this type of the cell. So with the mercury cell, we can produce highest purity of the NaOH solution. If the correct amount of the water is being used, we can directly produce 50% concentration of the aqueous solution of NaOH. And very much low amount of the salt can be evaporated. And we have to remove low amount of the salt in the evaporation operation. However, loss of mercury in environment is very serious problem. So these are the different points that can be used to explain the mercury cell. Now let's just understand the schematic diagram of the mercury cell. 
as here in this image you can see that this is the particular example of the castaner cell that is being invented in the in 19th century as you can see here this is your anode compound and now mercury that is floating mercury is being replaced for the cathode compound so the process is very much similar that we are going to pass the concentrated solution of the brand and we will supply external electricity to act, to carry out the electrolysis process in this particular cell and at the end result we will get chlorine gas on the anode side and we will get hydrogen and NaOH on the cathode side as you can see here that the chlorine gas is being liberated from the anode side and from the cathode side we will ultimately get this NaOH solution and this NaOH solution is highly concentrated so we can eliminate it evaporation operation or we have to remove some small amount of the salt associated from the aqueous solution right so this was all about the mercury cell now let's just quickly understand the different advantages and disadvantages of this cell the advantages include that it can be produced pure form of the NaOH and concentration of 50 percentage aqueous solution can be easily achieved without even evaporation or we have to perform small amount of the evaporation in order to remove very low quantity of the salts. Then the second advantage of this process is that it can produce pure form of the chlorine gas directly. So these are the advantages. Now let's just move to the disadvantages of this particular cell. The major disadvantage of this cell is that it requires higher voltage than the diaphragm cells. Hence around 15 to 10 percentage of the more electricity will be consumed. So it consumes more electric power than the other cells. But it ultimately produces higher concentration of the NaOH solutions. Then the second disadvantage is the strict measures are required to avoid mercury contamination as it can be causes different serious problems. So it can easily, con so the product can be easily contaminated with the mercury. So we have to take care of this thing. Then it requires brine to be in the pure form. So this is the one more disadvantage that the brine need to be very much purified before it can be used in this cell. So we are going to require very much highly concentrated brine solution to use mercury cell. These are the advantages and disadvantages of the mercury cell. Now let's understand the membrane cell for the production of the, of the NaOH and chlorine. This membrane cell we have already understand in the previous video, right? This membrane cell use semi-permeable membrane that, that can be used for the separation of the anode and cathode compartment that we have understand in the previous video for the production of the NaOH and chlorine. Membrane is a porous chemically active plastic sheet that only allow Na ion and reject OH ion to pass through it. The porous membrane is to exclude OH ion and Cl ion from the anode chamber. This making the product far low concentrated in the salt that is from the diaphragm cell. So in this particular cell we will get low concentration of the salt. Hence we have to reconcentrate our brand solution as we have seen in the flow sheet. So as you can see here this membrane is only allowed the Na plus ion and it rejects negative ion of NaOH and Cl of hydroxyl ion and chlorine ion, right? So it do not allow negative ion to pass through it. The combination of plant using output of membrane cell and it can be fed to the diaphragm cell can be used for the considerable cost reduction. As we have seen that mercury cell is require higher voltage and purified brine which ultimately increases the cost. But with the help of combination of this membrane cell and diaphragm cell, we can achieve higher level of the cost reduction and we can produce high concentration of the NaOH. The cell voltage required for this particular uh, membrane cell is around six to, is around three to six volts. So we can say that it requires relatively less amount of the power consumption compared to the mercury cell. As you can see here in this image, this schematic diagram for the membrane cell. As you can see that this thin layer of the membrane which is made up of the porous material and it only allow Na plus ion that is a positive ion to pass through it and restrict 
negative ions. This specific chamber is known as the anode chamber and this chamber is being known as the cathode chamber. In the anode chamber, we generate chlorine gas out of the Bran solution. When we supply electricity, this NaCl decomposes into the uh, Cl- and OH- and it also generates Na plus ion, which pass through the semi permeable membrane and pass and come in a contact with the cathode ion, which is being made of the cast ion. And it ultimately generates NaOH like this. As you can see, that this NaOH, or as you can see here, the dilute dilute NaOH is being generated in this step. And this dilute NaOH can further send to the evaporator to increase its concentration. Or we can use this diaphragm cell at the in the combination of the membranes. And hydrogen as a byproduct can also be liberated from this point. So this was the all about the membrane cell. Now let's just quickly understand what are the advantages and disadvantages of this membrane cell. As you can see here, it can produce relatively pure form of the NaOH. So this is again very much advantage of the membrane cell. It consumes lesser electricity. It only consumes 77 percentage of the electricity compared to the mercury cell. So we can say that we can achieve higher degree of the cost reduction with the mercury cell as well. It do not use any substance such as asbestos and mercury. So the waste disposal is not that much problem with the membrane cells. Now having said that, let's just focus on the disadvantages. The chlorine gas contains oxygen, which is again very much environment concern for the, for the manufacturing of the chlorine. Then the second disadvantage that it requires very high quality of the purified brine, right? So in the previous video, we have already understood that the brine need to be performed certain activities. That it has to be concentrated, then it has to pass through the precipitation, filtration and ion action chambers. In order to increase the quality, the quality of the brine solution. So this is again the disadvantage and it ultimately increases the cost. The short life of the membrane is again very much disadvantage and problem associated with this problem. With this process, as the membrane life is very much shorter, then the high cost of the production is again very much is again very much problem for this entire cell. So this was the all advantages and disadvantages of different cells. We can easily compare these cells with the help of advantage and disadvantage. This question can be asked that compare the mercury cell with membrane cell and diaphragm cell, right? So this is the important question from this chapter. Or they can also ask this explain to explain any of one of this cell that can be asked to explain diaphragm cell or mercury cell. So we have to draw that schematic diagram and we have to explain the process that take place in the diaphragm cell. We have to write its chemical reaction that we have seen in the previous video. And we have to discuss advantages and disadvantages of these particular cells. Now in the next video, we will understand the product of sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate. Till then, Keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.